Hola a todos. My name is Stacy de Armas. And as we get started, I want to first acknowledge, you know, when you opened, Claudia, and also in hearing Dr. Andrade talk, I was thinking about the different roles we each have to play. Some of us are here in the economic sector, some are here in finance, some are advocacy, some business. And I'm thinking about the role that I play in the work that I do at Nielsen, and it's really in the media sector, of course, but it's about representation and content. There were a few angles, a few ways I could have gone today, things to talk about. I could have talked about uh, how much mis and, mis and disinformation are impacting our community. Um, I could have talked about a number of things. I decided to talk about how we see ourselves in content because I feel like that's really what's driving that 77% number you brought up in the beginning, which is we don't know how we are, how we are perceived because we don't see ourselves regularly in content. So I'm pleased to be back. And I'm also, I just want to acknowledge how exciting this is. It's kind of like a mini reunion, am I right? I mean, everybody, let's give her, like, for showing up. Everybody I've ever known in my whole career, I think, is here, and that's super exciting. Um, so let me start with a little bit about my personal experience, and I want to tell you a really quick story, and then we'll get into the data. Um, as a first-generation Latina in the U.S., I often get asked, uh, a, a couple of questions, but most specifically, I usually hear people say, funny, you don't look Cuban. <laughs> Actually, I, I get that all the time, and maybe it's my light skin or it's my name. There are not too many estaces running around. Um, or perhaps it's the other person's recent familiarity with the Afro-Cuban artist behind Patria y Vida, Latin Grammy winner of the year for Song of the Year. Thank you. Really important movement. We could have also talked about how that song really brought us all together because it was more about social justice and, and a movement than it was about a specific corner of our community. Um, but I usually respond with, si, sí, soy cubana, knowing that I'm gonna open myself up perhaps to a language duel or quizás más preguntas, you never know. Um, because the, you see, the thing about language proficiency is it isn't a proxy for language preference or choice. So simpler said, how well I speak English or Spanish isn't representative of the way I like to connect or communicate with content. So, good. To put a finer point on that, three quarters of Latinos, three quarters of all Latinos in the US who speak Spanish, in, for, for three quarters, pardon me, engaging in our language is a privilege and a choice. It's not a necessity. And that's really important as we move forward talking more about content. So what does that engagement look like? Of course, it takes place with our family and friends. You hear us dialoguing here in corners, to half in English, half in Spanish. But really importantly, it's taking place in media where audiences are demanding more relevant content. Let me explain that a little bit. The democratization of media has brought with it a really cluttered space, right? There's media content everywhere. And that's led to what I call the relevancy revolution, which describes what Latinos are demanding from media today. Meaningful, culturally relevant, nuanced content served on trusted platforms with personalities that we trust and we know recognize our unique US Hispanic experience. And a big part of that experience is the privilege we hold to connect in the language we choose. Uh, and there's so much more than just serving up Spanish language content, right? I'm not talking about language here. Uh, but it's our demand for meaningful content that bridges us into our culture and gives us a place to feel seen and be seen. And you really sometimes can't get it outside of this very unique and special ecosystem. We all know if you've been around this year or really even the last few years, that owning our culture and our narrative has really never been hotter. Right? This is the time. This is the time to be Latino. Um, but for all of us, of any language proclivity, whatever language we choose to speak or connect in, we are leaning in and seeking culturally relevant content like we never have before. So the story I'm telling you about me and in general is that we don't speak Spanish or watch TV in Spanish or listen to music in Spanish or scroll through TikTok in Spanish because we have to. We do it because we want to, and it's a special privilege and a place for any brand who wants to talk to us to be. So here's another example of that language choice, just to underscore it. In radio, a full 74% of the listeners to Tejano music are English dominant. And for Latino urban, a full 50%, I said English dominant Latinos, consuming this Spanish language content, 
We see the same thing all over television, where this year, a Spanish language show hit the top 10 for all streamed content in any language. In May, there we go, if you can see it. If not, I'm gonna tell you what it says. In May, 71% of the impressions from this Fierta America were from English-speaking Hispanics. More examples, uh, in May, Liga, Mexica, Liga Mexicana perdón, had 1.4 million impressions from English-speaking Hispanics. That's 80% of that audience. All in all, 37% of all Hispanic impressions to Spanish language content in May were from English-speaking Hispanics. That's more than 50 million. Spanish language programming delivers so much more than just programming. It delivers this world where we, of any language proclivity that we choose, find relevance, community, and more. So if those examples of the power of choice of language aren't enough, look no further than your own social media feeds. I'm gonna throw you a couple of examples here, okay? These are some of my favorites. Um, for those who know, you know. Tenemos, mi reina, tenemos, okay? Uh, also, um, Disculpe su majestad, es acomodo? Anybody? You know this is in your, in your TikToks and your, your reels. I don't want to hear it if it isn't. Of course, no me importa, which we saw the wonderful who we'll see later. Uh, Dr. Mauricio did a really great one of those, and everyone does those. There's millions and millions of these. Sencillita, tranquilita. Uh, oh, and my personal favorite, I try to get my boyfriend to do this one all the time. Uh, mi mujer me gobierna. I keep trying to catch him in the kitchen. And I'm like, can you just... I know you're white, but can you just come with me on the road? Uh, the point is that U.S.-born Hispanics are influencing today's most newsworthy and fun trends. You see it all over your social. I showed it to you on radio. We see it in television. But why are we seeing all this in Spanish? Again, let's talk about it for a second. Because that meaning and that specific sentiment can only be expressed in Spanish. So we share it in Spanish. And we share it to our English and Spanish speaking friends alike. So let's put this to rest and then we'll talk about one other topic. Language reliance isn't why we consume content in Spanish. Spanish language content is consumed because more than anything, it delivers this meaningful sentiment that you just, that sabor, it just doesn't exist in any other place. So let's talk about the power of the screen. Uh, this is about what Hispanic audience want to see, not just where we are at in the media ecosystem. When brands are in content that we want to see and feel seen in and celebrate our culture, the impact of that brand being in that content is amplified. Richard talked about this earlier and I'm gonna give you stats in a few seconds. We also wanna see a full range of our lived experiences and content. Our intersectional identities, we just heard Marco talk about that, our ethnic plurality, not just in content but also in ads and not just one or two characters in el fondo ahí, like in the back walking by uh, and listen, the truth is, with increased scrutiny around social equity, having your creative, if you're a brand or you work for a brand or you're dialoguing with brands, having their creative and content where Latino storylines are told authentically is more than just the right thing to do. It's a brand safety measure, it's good corporate citizenship, and it's great business, as we heard from what Anna shared earlier. In a recent Nielsen study, uh, we asked Hispanics how important representative content was to them. 60% told us that they're more likely to watch content that features their identity group. A full 45% though said that they feel that there's not enough representation of their identity group. So 60% said, yeah, I want to see myself in more content. And 45% and said, but there's not enough out there. Unfortunately, uh, that 45% is right. We make up 19% of the population as you've heard today or as you can easily Google. Yet across broadcast television, streaming, and cable, Hispanic representation is 10% when it's combined. 10%. And I want to be clear when we talk about Spanish language content. Think, think about this. When you remove Spanish language content, that 10% drops to 6%. That tells us that the vast majority of Latino representation on the TV glass is actually coming from Spanish language television. Quite literally propping up the numbers for the entire industry. And remember that 60% that said they're more likely to watch content that features their identity group? This leaves us with the fact that Spanish language TV is among the most representative ecosystems on all of television, but not just of Hispanics, interesting, also of gender and our ethnic 
plurality. Women are represented at or above parity across Spanish language TV. It's not like that in English language TV. Afro-Latinos with visibility of more than two times their population estimate. Hispanic LGBTQ represented at parity all across Spanish language TV. And yes, I'm advocating for Spanish language TV today. So who has permission to fall in love or get married, buy a home or travel? The content we watch subconsciously informs us who gets the corner office, who gets to stand on this stage, who's an expert in giving the news. And the media we watch also, importantly, informs identity formation for our kids and for others. Why do you think they think about us the way that they do? How do they see us in content? Folks, we all know there is magic in good storytelling, but if we aren't represented and present in those stories, then we are left out of that magic. That's why Claudia had that number of that 77% that don't know their own story or their own power, because we don't see it in content. Backing up what Richard said, Latinos told us that they are 55% more likely to buy products from brands that advertise in content featuring Hispanics. Because for Hispanic audiences, representation, community, authenticity, paramount. But we know that. We've been talking about that in these rooms for a while. The right creative and the right content is a proxy for how brands show up for others. And in the era of social justice, I got it, in the era of social justice uh, increasingly in front of us, think about that as a proxy for your brand. This year alone, I want to wrap it up with letting you know we released a study uncovering that for brands who did invest in inclusive content, they had more than two times higher return on that ad spend than brands who were light investors. Remember today, be in the right content. It means, it may, and that's actually, I'm glad that you applauded that because that's what underscores, that's what's important here is, well, it's not what's all, at the end important, but for many brands, it's what is, right? They're looking, where's the green? Where's the green? We're bringing those dollars. We're bringing them in all the rest of other data that you saw, and we're bringing them when it comes to advertising too. To close out, Latinos have $2.6 trillion in spending power, which you've heard. You'll see that number go up or down a little bit depending on, but we're right in that bucket. And additionally, 2.9 trillion minutes of viewing power. Brands should be not just where the eyeballs are, but also where the hearts are too. We've all heard that advertising line by that Philadelphia retailer, John Wanamaker. He famously said, half of the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. Well, I will tell you after today and after some of the data I shared with you, the hint is the half that is wasted is the half that is invested in non-inclusive content. Thank you so much for your opportunity to be here today. Thank you, Claudia.